Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the gift of light that comes from your Son. Father, we ask you now to send upon us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Fill this place, fill our hearts. Fill us with the grace of knowing who Jesus is. Convince us, Lord, that he is the greatest thing that has happened in our lives. Fill us also with a zeal of bringing others into encounter with him. And we ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> An image, epiphany, and us. An image, epiphany, and us. The image is this picture here, if I can pull it up. Well, it's closely related. Many of us may know what this vessel is. This is the Titanic, which sank in the early hours of April 15th, 1912, as it made its maiden voyage from England to New York. That sinking happened in a matter of hours. The actual image, though, that I want to use is her lifeboats. Her lifeboats. While the Titanic was sinking, 18 lifeboats launched, but 472 spaces were left unused in those lifeboats, 472 unused places in those lifeboats. And of those 18, two went back to go and save the 1,500 people that still needed saving. Only two. April 15th, 1912 was a day Lifeboats were not used what they were built for, which is saving lives. Father Matthew, what do lifeboats have to do with the epiphany? Everything. Everything. Today we're celebrating the feast of the epiphany. Epiphania. And St. Paul takes this word, this idea of manifesting in order to save, and he applies it to the only one who can really show up and save the day. 
and his name is Jesus. And St. Paul talks about in the second letter to Timothy of how Jesus does show up and does save the day through his death and resurrection. And thus we have this word for today's feast, Epiphania, manifestation. But what is God doing? What is God doing? He is sending a very clear message that Jesus is not just for the Jewish people. He is not for one particular people alone, but he is revealed to the world. That everyone is called to experience Jesus. There is room for everyone in front of the Christ child. Back to the image, there's room for everyone in the lifeboat. Everyone has a place in Christ's heart, in Christ's church. Because as God looked at the world in Jesus' day and saw the sin and the rebellion and the chaos and the division and the conquering and the slavery and the disregard for human life, he sent an answer. And his name is Jesus Christ. It's a lifeboat, and there's room for everyone here. But if we forget what lifeboats are for, we do exactly the same thing that those 18 lifeboats failed to do on April the 15th, 1912. We do not exist for ourselves. We exist to bring people into the lifeboat. 
Because if we believe that Jesus is the answer, the antidote to everything that is wrong with this world, and he is, then we have to be convinced of that, and we have to bring other people into the lifeboat. And so now it comes down to us. Do I know that Jesus is the answer? I'm sorry, we don't have physical room, but we have spiritual room for you. Anybody, everyone. There is room for everyone in our lifeboat. Who can I be praying for? Who can I consider inviting? Maybe not to Mass, but maybe to Alpha or to RCIA or something. To come to know the answer. God's answer. God's answer to our world. May we pray for, in this Mass, the gift of being convinced that Jesus is the answer. And that I bring other people into the lifeboat that is the church, because there is always room. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. <laughs>